Bonnie Grace continuing my exploration of the Edna Valley and this wonderful wine producing region which is right next door to Pismo Beach. And I'm actually kind of winding up the day here with a friend of mine and somebody I'm really happy to be tasting some wine with, Mr. John Niven. And John and his family are some of the most well-known winemakers uh, in the area. And you're doing a lot. In fact, I have even a hard time keeping track this year. I know Baileyana is really kind of your, I would say, your flagship. But tell yeah. me a little bit about some of the other brands that you're making uh, wine under now. So we go back here to day one where uh, my grandfather planted our Paragon Vineyard in the right. early 70s. Uh, that started everything. In the mid-80s, mid my grandmother started Baileyana, okay. out of a little vineyard in her front yard right down the road. And then uh, uh, my generation came on board in the late 90s. Uh, we kind of took Baileyana uh, under our wing and got to grow it and build it to where it is today. But then our creative juices got flowing, mm -hmm. and we started Tangent, which uh, Tangent is only white wines, no reds. All cool climate here from the Edna Valley, just showcasing what Mother Nature gives us and a real racy, cool climate, uh, white wines. Uh, then we started Trenza, which is kind of a, a red blend, some white blend, Spanish theme, but here in the New World. Uh, it's taken some of these classic Spanish varietals, but putting our California hand uh, print on them. Uh, Cadre, which is an innovative Pinot Noir. Yeah, tell us yeah, a bit about that. Cadre is, kind of Cadre is real interesting. Well, there's four great appellations down here for Pinot Noir. There's the Edna Valley, the Royal Grande Valley, the Santa Maria Valley, and Santa Rita Hills. Let's, let's pause right there, John, because I want to help um, people understand where we're really located. I think, you know, a lot of people, they think of California wine producing regions, and they definitely know Napa and Sonoma. If they're a little bit hip and they've seen sideways, they're like, you know, that's like Santa Barbara, sort of. But there's this wonderful swath in the whole appellation of Central Coast, which is one of right. the biggest, probably outside of Sonoma Coast, which is quite big as well, has these pockets within it. So we've got San Luis Obispo County, and then you're mentioning two well-known yep. Pinot Noir producing areas, which are in fact south and a little bit cooler that you know it's, it's interesting how the kind of um, weather patterns also um, mimic where the county line are so w when you're blending across those divisions how do you go about I mean just well, buy the grapes or how do you label it or well, how does that we, impact? Uh, cadre the vision was go to each of those four little pockets those right. appellations source fruit from the pioneers of those appellations the pioneering vineyards of those appellations and typically a winery would do separate bottlings of those four wines right. but we blended those four almost equal parts into one wine cadre the blends called the architects because these are really the guys that so put pinot noir on the map this is a time to do name this dropping. is uh you know our family who was yeah. uh, really pioneers of pinot noir here in the edna valley the Letitia vineyard which is original maison dutz planning in the royal grande valley uh, the Bienacito Vineyard, which uh, is very famous and pioneered the Santa Maria Valley with the Miller family. And then Long Cantata Vineyard in Santa Rita Hills, which is planted by Richard Sanford, who's kind of the godfather of uh, Santa Barbara Pinot Noir. Uh, we rolled those all into one called the Architects. And going back to what you're talking about, what does that do? Wine style. Each little pocket, each little appellation uh, gives its own kind of characteristic to the blend. Here in the Edna Valley, uh, we're a little more of that elegant, bright fruit. You get to Letitia and Santa Rita Hills, more of that big, darker blue fruit. Yeah. Uh, it definitely is a moving away from and, red fruit, kind of red cranberry. Yep. And the Anacito is kind of in between. Yeah, I agree. Um, I agree. And the whole vision was to really just make a dynamite wine, right. showcasing the diversity of rolled into one of the South Central Coast. Yeah. Uh, John and I were talking earlier about uh, it's still kind of the Wild West in this area, which I like. And one of, um, you know, whether it's blending uh, across different regions and having the courage to do that in a single bottle, and also the willingness, the lack of ego. You mentioned Richard Sanford, one of the most loving, humble people. There's a reason why he's been so inspirational to so many other winemakers. Another thing that's a little bit unusual, we're talking Wild West, the wine that's in this glass. Yeah. Let's talk about this because this is going to be the one that I have to drink. I think so, it's so this, cool. So the last uh, part of our portfolio that we didn't talk about is Zocker. It's like soccer, but with the Z. Soccer. Zocker in, uh, in Austrian and German means a gambler. And there's a great varietal grown in uh, Austria called Gruner Beltliner. It's kind of the, the Chardonnay of, uh, of Austria. Uh, and there's very little grown in California. And we put just about 13 acres in the ground. Which puts you, I think, at the head of the pack. Oh, I don't think anybody else has 13 they, acres of, of There's GB definitely not much uh, Gruner much, in yeah. the ground. Mm -hmm. And we put in here and took a bit of a gamble, hence the Zocker. Mm -hmm. um, and what we have is our 2011, which is our third vintage, which has just been dynamite. It is, and it's, it's good. You know, it's important to us. We we play with these varietals like Albarino, uh, Grenache Blanc, uh, Gruner Veltliner, that it's got to taste like the stuff from their homeland. 
uh, and you know we're really proud of what we're doing with these varietals, specifically the Albarino and uh, Gruner. Your Albarino, it smells I mean, and looks and tastes like the real stuff, and you know to be able to have a sommelier or a wine critic, you know give us a props for pulling it off here in California, it, it means a lot to our family because we're, we're really into, you know, innovating and exploring the potential of our estate. For sure. Pioneering. You know, there's not many uh, wine families or properties in the world that are doing what we're doing. We we grow just about a dozen bridles ranging from Albarino to Gruner Veltliner to Elegant Chardonnay Pinot to Big Massive Syrah, but it's all off one piece of land and we're taking all into the bottle really exploring the potential of a single property. Yeah, and figuring out what makes sense. And I think, again, that uh, here in this area that people have the luxury and, frankly, the courage to do that, where you're trying to let the land speak. And I think one of the big challenges with the California wine industry has been, you know, chasing the tail of the tiger or to mix metaphors, planting the tiger, if you will. Right. And a lot of people like, well, if Pinot Noir is popular, let me pull out no matter whether, you know, whether Pinot is well suited to my particular plot of land or not. You know, Pinot's hot, I got to tear out and regraft or what have you. And it's been really nice to see, I think, in this area, a genuine willingness to experiment and then let the land speak and yep. see what works. So for me, you know, I know Gruner, it's a grape that I love. And this tastes like Gruner, you know, it's got the kind of hallmark of kind of, you know, green, greenish pepper quality, right. a little white spice, a little yep. bit kind of aromatic, almost like a, like a celery salt thing, a beautiful acidity. And I think, you know, acidity is something we talked about a little bit today on some of our journeys, but again, I think the Edna Valley specifically to me is often a story. We're chasing some wine with Clay at Claiborne and Churchill, and just this beautiful linear acidity in his yep. Riesling. And I'm, I'm picking that up, that same type of acidity, albeit a total, you know, different grape here, but that beautiful kind of precision that I think is, is climate driven. So, I mean, how, how do you get that in this Well, corner? there's, the Edna Valley is a great place to live great place to grow grapes, but it's a great place for white wines. You will see what you're talking about, that trademark acidity, all the way from Chardonnay down to Sauvignon Blanc, and Gruner and Riesling, everything Albarino. in between. Uh, but, you know, the Edna Valley is really neat. We're, you know, not far from Pismo Beach, yeah. uh, just over the hill, about five miles, and we just get this, you know, funnel effect from uh, Mother Nature. It's kind of her natural air conditioning that just gives us moderate, moderate days um, where our warmest part of the day is about noon. Yeah. And that's basically when the fog burns and before the wind kicks in. Uh, and that warm part of the day is only for about, you know, half hour to an hour. You know, that cool climate uh, just gives us a very slow, cool growing season that keeps, we're able to get ripe fruit but keep that acidity. The real thing that, that I think marks the Edna Valley outside of amazing wine and the acidity and some of the things we're discussing is also the broader sort of tourism opportunities, sure. frankly. It's an amazing part of California. We're about halfway between LA and San Francisco, and it has a non-pretentious, frankly, wine community around it. So when I travel and, and talk about our wines, you know, maybe in a, a blizzard in Manhattan, and to be able to say, well, you could come visit us and be surfing on a white sand beach in Pismo and jump in your car and within 10 minutes be tasting out of our barrels, people just go like, yeah. you're killing me. Um, but there's so much to offer. I mean, we have lakes, hiking, mountain biking, the whole uh, coastal scene. I mean, this is really in my mind where this uh, Southern California beach scene starts. One of the, the taglines for Pismo is, you know, classic California, the sort of long right. boards on the back of the wagon and all that great culture and movies that kind of immortalize that. Um, the difference is there's good wine here. We're not pretentious. Our Maybe neighbors nice aren't pretentious. It's come here, taste some wine, throw some bocce balls, hang out on the lawn, Maybe experience some bridles you've never tasted before. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's it's what the Central Coast why, is. Why would you want to leave? I can see why. You know, John and his family is, uh, I think, a testament to deep-rooted uh, businesses. They're not people that are just kind of coming in and planting a vanity vineyard. You know, these are family-based businesses where the family of, of generation after generation is really investing. Uh, in the community and, and giving something back to the community as well. So yep. stick around. We'll see what your kids uh, make with wine. What grapes are they going to grow? Oh, jeez. Could be crazy. <laughs> we'll see what they come up with. Well, thank you so much, thank John. You. been tasting some wine with John Niven. We're here at the Baileyana Tasting Room in beautiful Edna Valley, just outside Pismo Beach. And this is the one I'm not going to spit. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. That's good.